Good morning, San Diego. We are live from the Pine Valley Resource Center where with 16,000 customers without power, SDG&E is offering resources like water, food, snacks, a place to charge your phone. After the break, hear from residents who say this is nothing new for them. But first, let's get a check of those wind and weather conditions from Francella. Good morning, Francella. Good morning, Hunter. Happy Friday, everybody. We do have strong winds, damaging winds already up to 89 miles per hour in Big Black Mountain. Critical fire weather continues where it's happening right now. Very low relative humidity, very hot temperatures once again. And then another round of Santa Ana winds coming this weekend. Yes, I know. Allie, good morning. Good morning. We're down here at Point Loma High School where the PPR alarm clock pep rally may be over, but the fun is not. We still got much more to show you coming up from here. Good morning, San Diego continues on right now. This is Good Morning San Diego. Good morning, San Diego. I'm Lauren Finney. And I'm Jason Ostell. And for Paul Rudy, it is Friday, October 25th. Yes, and we are following a red flag warning, which remains in effect for most of the day for San Diego County. It will last until about 5 o'clock this evening. The National Weather Service has also issued a high wind warning for county mountains and valley areas. That will last until 2 p.m. As of 5 o'clock this morning, 16,000 SDG&E customers are without power around the county. Due to high winds and dangerous weather conditions, power has been turned off as a safety precaution. And fire crews are at the scene of a brush fire in San Marcos that broke out early this morning near Plateau Avenue. Police say it started when a transformer blew up. Firefighters were able to stop the spread of the flames at three acres. Crews remain on scene. They're just trying to make sure nothing sparks up. Some residents living in the area were asked to evacuate. They're now allowed back in their homes as the power has been shut off in the area. And because of that blown transformer, classes are canceled and offices are closed at Cal State San Marcos. The power outage will remain in effect until 6 o'clock tonight, we're told. We're also told that Double Peak Elementary, which is in that same vicinity, is also closed for classes today. Firefighters made quick work of a fire burning off State Route 94 near the Mount Hope area that sparked this morning. It began just after 6.30 this morning near Home Avenue. An apartment building nearby was evacuated, but they have been back into the building, which is good news. Two lanes on the freeway, however, are still closed as crews work to clean up the mess there. Uh, we do have a crew nearby uh, to get some live reports as they continue to mop up and monitor for hot spots in the area. Many local residents are affected by the red flag warning, which remains in effect for most of the day due to those high winds and fire conditions. KUSI's Hunter Sowards is live at Pine Valley Improvement Club. It's a resource center for those without power. Hunter, good morning. Good morning, Hunter. Good morning, guys. Yes, residents here, they know this. This is uh, nothing new. It's to be expected almost when those Santa Ana winds move into their area. There's six different resource centers set up across the area, and we want to bring in the vice president of the Improvement Club here with Pine Valley and just get a kind of an update of what residents can expect if they're in the area and need uh, maybe resources. What what can they get when they come? Well, the uh, the way everything is set up, and uh, thanks to SDG&E for, for doing this, uh, you know, we do have power here. Uh, we have got Wi-Fi that we can get people on the Internet if they need to do that. Uh, snacks and water, ice. Um, there's plenty of different things that they can get if they need to, just the basic things to help them get through this. Um, because this is tough. It is tough. And talk a little bit about, even though this is something that's to be expected and maybe something that isn't new for people that live in the area, what is the most difficult part about, you know, not knowing when that power is going to be turned back on? Um, I think the, <laughs> the, the biggest problem you have is that you, th there's, there's always kind of a fear of the unknown. Um, but up here, people tend to um, not really pay attention a lot of times to what's going on around them. And they're surprised by things when they happen. And if you were to kind of zone in a little bit, you, you, would, uh, you would see that there are, there's plenty of warnings of things that are, that are happening. But that still doesn't make it any more convenient. Because um, going through this up here, my wife and I, we own a diner here. Mm -hmm. And all the other businesses that are right along the main drag here, it hurts, it hurts business big time. So um, 
everybody's just trying to get along and make the best of it and do what we got to do. Absolutely. And anything else that you would want to say to people who are in need or maybe wondering where they can come, uh, any in- information that would be uh, something you'd want to get out to them? Um, just to say that the, uh, the clubhouse here in Pine Valley is open and there are plenty of people here to take care of you, whatever your needs are, in one way or another, whatever you need, we will take care of you. Well, thank you so much, Larry, and thanks for everything you're doing. We'll check back in with you a little later, see if we can get any more information on on those outages and those people affected. So, guys, as you can see behind me, water, food, snacks. As he said, we've got Wi-Fi here, a definite uh, necessity for people wanting to stay up to date with those weather conditions. All of the other five different resource centers, all that information can be found on KUSI.com. We will be keeping you updated on all of the latest. But for now, we are live from one of those six resource centers here in Pine Valley. We're going to send it back to you in the studio. Okay. Thank right, you, Hunter. Hunter. Thank you. And to the north of us, as, we, as we've been mentioning, firefighters are still battling several wildfires, including the tick fire that broke out in the Santa Clarita Valley. CNN's Nick Watt is live at the scene with the latest information for us. Mm-hmm. Nick, good morning. What can you tell us? Well, Jason, I can tell you that the wind is picking up the last hour or so. We are expecting gusts of 50 to 70 miles an hour around here this morning. The wind was blowing through the night and firefighters on the ground, more than 500 and helicopters from the air trying to douse those flames before the wind picked up stike. We're going to have to move back a little bit. There's a engine I believe might be coming through. So yeah, we've just been told the update is 4,300 acres have burned. 10,000 structures in danger, 40,000 people under mandatory evacuation because the tick fire during the night jumped the 14 freeway. So as you can see behind me, some houses have been lost. Latest official figure we got was six. I am pretty sure that that will rise. And as we always see in these wildfires, one house got hit by an ember, it's gone. The next house, totally fine. The next house, totally fine. So the winds, we are expecting the winds to be high here through about the afternoon. But what has been amazing about this fire is just the speed of it. You know, about 1.45, I think it ignited yesterday. Within 20 minutes, we were up at 200 acres. And then another fire jumped, ignited about 10 miles away. So it's the old whack-a-mole but more than 500 firefighters really trying to get a handle on this during the night, knowing that these winds were going to pick up this morning, this afternoon. We are hoping that they will die down. Back to you guys. Nick, uh, you know, at nighttime is, is one of the scariest situations because, as you were alluding to, it jumped the 14 freeway, which puts uh, several new neighborhoods uh, under the serious danger. And firefighters are, are trying to wake people up in their homes to get them out and get them to safety. Were you able to talk to any residents uh, in the area who were, were woken up, or is that a situation that you were seeing in that particular area of Santa Clarita? No, I mean, Lauren, by the time we got here, all of those people had moved out. You know, sometimes you come to wildfire and it's under mandatory evacuation and you see a lot of people still hanging around. Not here. I have not seen one single resident sticking around. You know, yesterday we did see some people with the garden hoses at that old fire, garden hoses over the back fence trying to fight it off. But no, this is a ghost town right now. I have not seen anybody sticking around. Of course, firefighters, media, um, but no one was sticking around. I mean, that fire was going so fast that if I got the knock on the door, I'd have left as well. Lauren? Yeah, yeah well, it's and, good to see. And we can see while we've got those firefighters who are out firing the, fighting the brush fire where you are in that neighborhood. It looks like a case of uh, structure protection or unfortunately in the case of that house behind, uh, there's some, some uh, serious damage there. Yeah, I mean, and actually in, in the last hour or so, we've seen some helicopter drops. As I mentioned, they were doing helicopter drops during darkness behind these houses past hour or so we've had some uh, drops and Stike, I don't know if you can come around here you can see the FOSS check that they've dropped on top of those houses over there of course they dropped that to try and contain the fire so 4,300 acres but you know it was as I say just 
the speed of this. It seems like they have managed to protect most of this neighborhood. I mean, this house, obviously, as you say, is up just round the corner where we were earlier this morning, which you can't actually see. There were two houses burned down there as well. And, you know, there were firefighters hopping between houses. They were working on one house. They'd see an ember hit another house, move the hoses over there, whack-a-mole trying to keep this under control. But I've got to say, this wind in the past hour really, really has picked up. And as we all know, across Southern California, that's the issue. I mean, it's the dry underbrush, it's the low humidity, it's the high temperatures, you know, 80s and 90s around Los Angeles right now. But it's it's the wind. And, you know, this week in, in Los Angeles, we have we had the Palisades fire on Monday in West LA, which, I mean, I saw that lick up right up the back of some really nice homes there in the Palisades. They managed to contain that, lots of airdrops, but you know, it is these densely populated areas that they are really worried about. And as you say, Jason, doing everything that they can to protect these homes, dropping the FOSS check, dropping the water from the helicopter in behind these homes because, you know, the fire comes up these canyon walls in that brush and boom, it can take these houses. So they have been doing a pretty incredible job. More than 500 of these men and women through the night doing whatever they can to protect these homes. Jason okay. and Lauren. Nick Watt reporting oh. live for us near Santa Clarita. Nick, thank you very much. Appreciate the report. Thank you, Nick. Stay safe. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, feel for the, those homeowners and just so thankful for the firefighters working there. Joining us right now is Deputy Chief of San Diego Fire Rescue, Stephen Lozano. Good morning. And, Good morning. And uh, we thank you for being here during yes. such a, a busy time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I were discussing as we we're watching that live shot, um, some of the, the, the mechanics of the fire and how this works, because it's really interesting if people were looking behind Nick Watt as he was reporting there, mm -hmm. firefighters are holding the hose on the roof that's on fire, and it is literally doing nothing to the flames. Mm -hmm. Because why? Explain how that works and why it's so devastating when one single ember gets onto your roof. So, yeah, like we were talking about, uh, that all looked like new construction. So all, imagine they all had tile roofs, mm -hmm. but the embers get underneath and they start burning that tar paper, start burning the, get to the wood, get in the attic, and then it becomes a structure fire. And structure fire is a different strategy and tactics. You have to get in there and literally cut it out. You have to dig it out until you get to clean wood. So you can see that roof's probably compromised, that building's probably compromised. Those uh, LA City firefighters are in uh, brush gear, not structure gear. So. Um, a battalion chief would be hesitant to send his guys and gals in there to start pulling down, um, you know, start digging out that wood if they don't have the right PPE on. Or so, so even them. though you're putting you're putting the water as it's falling down on the mm -hmm. roof, it's it's kind of running off the tiles and it's not getting underneath it's, it's those getting tiles this, yeah. in order to stop the fire. It's it, uh, incredible. It's like a campfire, right? When right. you throw your bucket of water on the top, if you don't get underneath, it just cooks and lights off again. Talk to us, you just mentioned that, that was very interesting, the difference, uh, the significant difference between the two types of gear, the brush versus the... Yeah, so I mean, the, the kind of the way to think about structure gear is it's, uh, it's heavy duty uh, Nomex on the outside with um, like a ski jacket underneath. It's very heavily insulated with thermal protection to keep that heat off of us. So you're essentially wearing heavy ski gear, a heavy jacket when you go into a structure fire with your breathing apparatus, your helmet, your, your gloves, everything is just, you know, really thick and padded and insulated. Where brush gear, you need to be a little bit more nimble because you're, you're jumping over, you're climbing ridges, you're going over brush, you're going over bushes, um, but it's lighter weight. So you only have that outer layer of, uh, of thermal protection. Which really so, shows the, the kind of struggle that you have when you're gearing up for a brush fire and it sort of jumps those canyons and starts burning homes, you, I mean. You're exactly right. And that's, and uh, Jason used the term structure protection. That's, that's what we would call it, you know. We, um, it almost you have to transition your firefighters when they're on the ground if they're fighting a brush fire when they go into structure protection they reassess okay do we need to put on our structure gear like how far are we going to fight this fire because if you have an active structure fire a house that's burning that's already fully involved but you have a large wildland fire well then you have to triage that out and, and address the larger fire than maybe just the structure fire. Talk to us about the lessons learned from the 2003 and mm -hmm. 2007 fires with regard to agency interoperability okay. and how you all work together. Yeah, so 2003, I was a firefighter in Scripps Ranch uh, when the Cedar Fire hit, um, and it was it's night and day now. Um, then it was 
a lot of animosity. You'd see a different patch and there was a little hesitation. You couldn't talk to them on the radio, different gear, they did things differently. Our relationships now with our uh, local agency partners, CAL FIRE partners, um, uh, either statewide, national partners has never been better. We have those uh, good relationships. We do the county wildland drill three day, uh, for three days every year where even units from LA City and even Tucson, I think I've seen, come together and we use the same radios. We use the same strategy and tactics. We let our, our junior officers and our new battalion chiefs call in water drops, deploy shelters. So the relationship is, is phenomenal and you can see that in the responses. You can be in the middle of the city and we'll have a Chula Vista rig or a Heartland rig and vice versa. You can be in Alpine and you'll have a city of San Diego, you know, uh, uh, brush, uh, brush rig there. And we're just, our relationships, like I said, have never been better. And we're just really all in, on, it's one team, one fight for the benefit of the, you know, the citizens of San Diego. And well, we're so thankful for yeah. that. Uh, you talk about the Cedar Fire and, and being there in, in the mix of that. Mm -hmm. What does this month of October and, you know, these weather conditions, I mean, what are you feeling as a firefighter when you see the conditions that are going on outside and what we're seeing? I mean, literally brush fires sparking up. Right. It's, um, you know, what? it's, it's almost, um, you think about it, it's always in, in your head. You're thinking about like where I was 16 years ago, completely different position, completely different level, and how my leaders uh, took care of me or, or what they did for me, and I wanna make sure that I give that to, to our troops, so our men and women that are out there. You know, making sure that they are have good food, that they're hydrated, that they're taken care of, that their gear is good, and that they know the leader's intent, so they know why we're there. You know, we're there to evacuate people, get people out of the area, get safe, and then to really affect um, the uh, most amount of uh, good that we can for the area. So what I mean by that is in the Cedar Fire, we would go through neighborhoods and we would put out all the embers, put out all the fires and move on, not knowing that it was, it was, there was a fire developing in the attic or there was a fire developing right. somewhere we didn't see. And literally, I remember driving back through areas we had just saved a couple hours later and it, it was moonscaped, it was devastating. Yeah. Wow. So we think about that kind of stuff, right. especially as, as, um, as chief officers, we talk about that. We, we don't want that to happen again. And number one, we don't want any loss of life. So that's always gonna be our priority. And then taking care of the men and the women that are actually doing the work on the ground, that are pulling those hoses, living out of that ash and dirty for the next, you know, next five days probably. Yeah. All right, Deputy well, we Fire Chief a, Stephen Lozano. Mm -hmm. A busy day for you. Thank you for sure. being here and, and explaining uh, some of that for us. And be safe. Yes. Thank Thanks. you. Please. Thanks for your service. All right, let's send it over to Francella, who's keeping an eye on those wind conditions. Because yeah. uh, we just all need to be vigilant through the rest of the day. Absolutely. You know, um, I was just checking some of the observations, and uh, we actually have stronger winds here in San Diego County than LA County. And the reason for that is because we have easterly winds, and those favor San Diego County much more than LA County. Uh, so, just to give you an idea, some of the strongest winds that we've seen so far this morning, we're looking at 66 to even 77 miles per hour, Seal Hill, Julian 77, Big Black Mountain 89 miles per hour. So, definitely, it's a windstorm out there. Right now, some of the the uh, current wind gusts. Latest observations, I made this map so you can actually see where some of these locations are, are at. In Alpine right now, 60 miles per hour. Seal Hill in Descanso, 73. Pine Valley, 42. Taking you north to Harrison Park, 32. Julian, 31 mile per hour wind gusts. Even Vulcan Mountain, 42. Black Mountain, where we had that gust at 89 miles per hour right now, 62. And Hell Hole Canyon, which is uh, east of Valley Center, 56 miles per hour. But even the valleys are seeing some gusty winds as well, especially uh, North County Valley areas. Some of the gusts are actually uh, have been picking up. So right now we're looking at Valley Center, 26 miles per hour at this moment. Rincon, 33, Palma Valley, 21, Goose Valley, 40 mile per hour wind gusts. And West Rancho Bernardo, 24 mile per hour wind gusts. Not only that, but it is very dry. The wind, high wind warning uh, continues until 2 o'clock this afternoon for the valleys and the mountains. Uh, the winds will actually begin to ease off just a little bit by the afternoon, but we're still going to have uh, uh, some strong gusts, even up to 55 miles per hour. Relative humidity values are in the 
single digits. So certainly 8% uh, relative humidity in Ramona, Bone Dry, as well as Valley Center, Temecula, 15% relative humidity in Carlsbad. So again, anything that sparks will just explode and, and spread very quickly because the winds are certainly there uh, with those easterly winds coming in from uh, the east uh, from because of the Santa Ana winds. Uh, 61 right now, right over Julian, 81 in Poway. It is very, very warm. 66 downtown San Diego, 79 right over Del Mar. And the red flag warning continues until 5 o'clock again because of the critical fire weather that we're experiencing right now. It is happening with the very strong winds, the very dry humidity, the dry fuels, and also the vegetation. We have a lot of vegetation that uh, we actually um, got from the winter because of all the rain, and now it's really dried out. The heat advisory also continues for the coastal areas and the valleys until 5 o'clock today with uh, temperatures that are going to be even up to 20 degrees above average. So still going to be very hot, very dry, and very windy. Next, we're going to be talking about the next uh, round of uh, coming up, the next round of Santa Ana winds after this one. Oh, joy. All like right. round what, four round or five? Three. This? Round three. This is round two today. For, and then we're going to go week, into yeah. for this week, and then we're going to go into round three Sunday into Monday. Wow, what an October it's been mm -hmm. already. Yeah. All right, we'll stay on top of things. Thanks, Francilla. Well, did you know that California is the nation's largest food producing state? Yeah, coming up, we're going to hear more about how that came to be through a cooking demo here in studio. Keep it here. Good morning, San Diego's coming right back.